and welcome to this ET Now special. I'm Nantara Rai. We have a very special guest with us today. It is Mohit Berman, the chairman of Dabur. And in fact, this is his first television interview since taking over as chairman. Mr. Berman, thank you so much for giving us time. Thank you. You're trotting around the world. So we really appreciate you agreeing to sit down with us over here. No, it's a pleasure. Thank you. So this is the first uh, interview since you've taken over as the chairman of Dabur. I'd love to get your views first up that how will things be different under you? I don't think much will be different. Uh, we're concentrating a lot on our power brands. We're expecting uh, business to be um, coming back to normalcy. We've had inflationary pressures recently, but uh, I don't think uh, my tenure will, uh, will change the way the business is being run. What would you want to do differently, Dabra? Is there something you don't want to do differently? No, I think, uh, I think we have a, a very, very strong management team at the top and uh, we believe that um, some of the new sort of uh, sectors or product categories we're going into have a lot of potential and um, I don't see uh, anything really changing except uh, we're going to be now focusing a lot on uh, some new of our newer product categories. So if one were to see uh, you know the past and what had kept Mohit Berman busy a lot of it was in the world of finance and uh, what we've also now seen recently what the rumor mills are that it was your brainchild, what we've seen with EverReady, what's happening with Religare. So I'd like to talk to you a bit about that. What's the game plan when it comes to EverReady? Well, EverReady, as you may know, that we've recently concluded an open offer. So um, we are now on the board. Uh, Dr. The promoters now. Yes, and uh, the uh, chairman is Dr. Anand Berman. And I'm on the board. And we've uh, hired uh, external consultants to do a five-year strategic plan. We put... Uh, we put some, uh, we made some senior management changes, and uh, we are going to be now focusing on the business over the next few years. Unfortunately, the business hasn't really grown in the last ten years, but uh, we are going to be at least doing double-digit growth from next year onwards. Over the new financial year onwards, is yeah. that the target that's been set out? Double-digit yes. growth. Exactly. We are going to, at the moment, we are market leaders in zinc batteries. We are going to be now spending uh, some money on growing our alkaline business. Which is, uh, which is going to go head on with Duracell. We are going to be uh, spending money on growing our lighting business and uh, we will evaluate one or two new product categories to, go, uh, to get into next year. So will all of this be within the battery segment, lighting segment or is the plan maybe to make EverReady a consumer durable company? Well we have to first uh, you know, put the house in order so um, uh, we have to get back all the uh, market share which uh, uh, we haven't got in the alkaline business. As I just said, in the zinc we are market leaders. So our, our focus is going to be actually you know, growing the alkaline business growing and growing the lighting business and of course focus a little bit more on, on businesses which uh, have synergy. So uh, I think for the next two or three years we're going to be growing those businesses. Can I ask you what would be the obvious synergies because then those, those could be the product yeah, entries? Yeah, you know, like, I mean, at this point of time, we, we, do, have a, we do have a portfolio of, uh, you know, torches, rechargeable torches, lighting, bulbs. So those are the businesses uh, that uh, we're going to be focusing on for the next two years. There was, um, you know, a lot of people were speculating when EverReady happened and uh, you guys were also reclassified as promoters that is this going to be a new consumer durable company that's going to be built up maybe like a Havels? Yeah, well, there, there, will, be some, uh, there will be some products that will compete with uh, um, maybe an Havels or, or some of the other consumer durable companies. But uh, at this point of time, I think uh, we want to really focus on the existing product categories that we are in. But we do have a plan, uh, and that's what I said, we've hired, yeah, we've hired Bain, and, but we do have a plan to get into some of the other consumer durable uh, categories. Are you going to tell me which of the new categories can be? No, that's, it's <laughs> difficult for me to say that at the moment because, you know, as I said, you know, we've hired Bain to work out a, a strategy for us and uh, those, uh, and, uh, and we'll only know this at the end of this financial year. So okay. I'm happy to tell you later. Okay, so I'm already requesting you for an interview at the end of the financial year so you can tell us more about what Bain Capital said. What about Religare? What's the game plan there? Because now yeah. you guys are the single largest uh, shareholder. Yeah. The, at this point of time, I think the Religare management are still concluding their OTS uh, 
uh, some settlement with the banks. So unless that doesn't happen, uh, we don't really, uh, we don't uh, have a way forward. Uh, once the once the settlement is done with the banks, then uh, being the larger shareholders, we will s evaluate uh, on 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 what to do uh, going forward. So that could take a long time. I think there are more than ten banks. Are yeah, there are more than ten banks, but I think uh, I think the senior management are really uh, close to uh, doing the OTS. Okay, so that could be next few will months. Will we see an open offer the way we saw for Ever Ready? Well, probably it's too early for us to say to answer that question. So it's not on the table or not off the table? Um, well, it's not on the table. At the moment? Yes. What is the, if, if, if when the issues are sorted out, what is the larger vision as far as Delhi Care goes? Uh, we don't, um, it's, it's, really, uh, it's really difficult for, uh, for me to uh, really give you a vision on that business as yet because until uh, we don't, um, we don't, you know, we don't see a way forward until the OTS happens and what businesses that Relegate still has on its table and what can be grown. I mean, the health insurance business is, of course, the the, the flagship, yeah. but some of the others obviously have been suffering over the last few years. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't think uh, I can really answer that question on the vision until uh, we really get to the nitty-gritty on, on evaluating each and every business. But this would be obvious, right? The Dabur has ambitions for financial services. No, historically we have been in financial services, but it's only been uh, not through Dabur. It's, it's been, been through like yeah, you with the yeah, Viva, for yes. example. No, we still are. So we yeah. have a life insurance company, we have a general insurance company. Um, so uh, most of these have been in joint ventures with, yeah. with you know foreign partners. I don't think uh, we believe that uh, we uh, we are the right people to be running financial services businesses. But uh, we see a lot of potential in those, and uh, if there is an opportunity, then to to tie up or team up with uh, with uh, a strategic uh, player who knows how to run the businesses, then we will. So, is that something that you're evaluating? Well, as I said, we're not evaluating <laughs> anything. In so, Renegade. you're not going to give me headlines for any. No, but because at this we, because at this point of time, mm -hmm. there are, there isn't any. Okay, fair point. Now, coming to the core business, the, the yeah. consumer-facing FMCG double business. Uh, Great quarter, increased market share in almost all products. Can I ask you how the company managed to do that and at a time when there is so many um, headwinds globally as well as, of course, inflationary pressures? Yes, of course. So, I mean, inflation, uh, you know, has been up 10 percent and uh, we see it, uh, you know, on between the 6 and 10 percent range over the next few quarters. And, of course, uh, um, FMCG has uh, has faced a lot of pressure, especially you know the cost of production is higher due to raw material prices going up, uh, and uh, a lot of our uh, products are very price sensitive. So it's not possible for us to uh, pass on the price increases totally. But uh, in some of the product categories where we have strong market share and uh, and basically can face the price pressure, we have taken price increases and. Uh, uh, and like in our in our healthcare range, um, you know, which which are basically catering to the um, to the upper middle class, it's possible. But they in the for the rural areas and especially in products which are very price sensitive, like hair oils, it's not possible to pass on full price increases. So um, we are going to continue um, uh, trying to um, you know manage our costs. To, to make sure that our margins are not hurt, but uh, we, we're still going to face a little bit of pressure over the next two quarters. Now, as the big boss, or one of India's largest uh, consumer-facing <laughs> businesses, I have to ask you this one question, which is that historically, whenever there is inflation, we see prices go up, right? And when prices cool down, um, we don't see the prices of shampoos, hair oils, etc. come down. Do you think that could change this time around? No, I don't. I mean, I don't think that's entirely true because, especially in in commodity um, products, uh, the prices do change. Uh, like, let me give you an example. Like in like in like in coconut oil. You know, there are many uh, companies that sell pro coconut oil. We have a brand called Anmol. The, uh, those uh, those those go up and down depending on on the actual raw material price. But a lot of the branded products, uh, a lot of the branded products don't, uh, go, you know, don't see prices drop because they, we generally don't take the price increase in, you know, in relation with the actual 
increase in the raw material and packing material prices. So it may not come down, but uh, as in when as in when these price, as when as in when raw and packing material prices go up, we don't take it up as 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 much as needed. needed. As what yeah. been needed. Yeah. The other part is that uh, while prices don't come down, what happens after shrinkflation? Now everybody had to do shrinkflation yeah. globally. Will you revert to old packaging when things are normal, stable? No, I think you know. Uh, we have to be able to a uh, lot of our products we actually do lower pack lower pack size and i think it's more to expand the uh, the product market not to really uh, you know tell, not to make the to yeah, make yeah exactly yeah. not to make the consumer down trade i think it's more to really grow the market and uh, we, you have seen uh, in the last few years a lot of uh, value packs coming out because a lot of price brackets like the 10 rupee price bracket and all you have to have products or you have to have pack sizes in those uh, price range uh, because there's no way then you can expand the market in the rural areas without uh, having um, products in that price bracket correct okay so that's uh, that's going to be something else to watch out for now the timing is of course very interesting um, you're seeing two very large conglomerates make very big moves when it comes to fmcg the Adanis have already done it, and um, now we know Reliance Industries is also interested in FMCG. You up for the challenge? Well, you know, I, I think theirs is a different model. I mean, they 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 have the last mile uh, distribution. I think they want to add products under their own uh, brand or private label in those. You know, we 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 historically have been a you know a strong uh, branded FMCG player who who really. Uh, are more focused on product innovation as well as uh, selling products to the uh, to the advertising route. Uh, we are not uh, we are not in the uh, distribution game uh, in the sense that we don't uh, we don't have our own distribution. Although we are now focusing a lot on modern trade on e-commerce, ten percent of our business is coming from uh, from e-commerce, and we are launching products specifically for the e-commerce market. So. Um, I think Kadabo will continue, um, you know, innovating, launching new products, and uh, and focusing on growing our distribution, but not owning it. Okay, so that that that's the asset light model, yeah. I guess, yeah. as far as FMCG companies go. But the buzz is that we will see brands that will come out from both of these conglomerates. So the question is then, how will uh, the incumbents uh, protect themselves? Will you will have to increase your marketing spends, advertising spends? Well, I think uh, you know. I, I uh, we've always faced challenges, uh, and, uh, you, know, and you, I mean, you fight yeah, with yeah, well as well, yeah. right? So competition actually makes you more nimble. I mean, you become uh, it, uh, a lot. A lot uh, of the competition that has come in recently has grown the Ayurvedic market, so we've benefited from that as well. A lot of non-Ayurvedic users are now using Ayurvedic products. Are you talking about Patanjali? Well, I'm just giving you examples. I mean, if you look at, uh, if you look at, uh, even in our, you know, in our, in the toothpaste market, uh, you know, a lot of uh, our our double red toothpaste now, because of the competition, has now become, you know, the third, the third largest. Uh, we're in the we're the third largest uh, oral care players in India, and uh, our double red toothpaste is uh, is the market leader in some places in in the south and in Orissa. So. Uh, I think uh, competition uh, is is good to a certain extent. It uh, you know it grows the it grows the category as well as makes you know more nimble. So can I ask you directly, yeah. like how will the competition work with whether it's an Adani, Wilmer, Patanjali, Reliance Industries? No, we will just have to. We will Keep just doing what you're yeah, doing and innovate. yeah yeah. We have to innovate and have different uh, and different uh, you know product uh, categories or different. Uh, Product launches like you know at, we are we are the market leaders of uh, in honey but we now have six different variants to see honey uh, etc. So you have to keep on innovating your product range. Will there be a price for? Do you anticipate a price for? So because we've seen that in the past when yeah. large conglomerates enter. Yeah, I think uh, you know I think uh, in this business because it's not a commodity uh, price wars uh, you know, don't happen. Uh, very often, but yes, there is a, there there is a situation where we have seen price wars before because competition have come in at lower prices. But the idea is that you know we we in the FMCG category, people don't buy the products only because it's on a lower price. You know, there's a there's a brand, there's a quality, all that 
plays an important part. So you may launch a product at a lower price, but unless it doesn't fulfill you know, the, 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 the person's need or doesn't give them a quality product, uh, the, the price doesn't last. Okay. Now, the other thing I wanted to ask you about was the big acquisition, which we heard about yeah. recently. 560 crores for Bacha, Masala, F4A into blended spices. Uh, what's the game plan? Why did you do it? And are you going to scale it up to be pan yeah. India? So, large market, uh, uh, spices market in India, 25,000 crores. Uh, unorganized, most uh, mainly regional players, no very strong uh, national player. Tastes, preferences, difference, uh, differs in every region. Um, we acquired Bacha. Um, it's very strong in, in Gujarat, Maharashtra, Andhra, west. in the West. Um, again, uh, we're going to, you know, obviously add our distribution strength. We're going to add the um, uh, marketing strength and, and take it. Uh, um, national. Uh, the reason why we didn't buy the business outright and have kept uh, the, the existing management on a minority basis is because I think uh, Spice's business is is quite uh, difficult to uh, understand unless you haven't been in that business for a long time. As I said earlier, tastes differ, you know, and um, it takes some time to understand the business. So with their with their support and with our strength in marketing and distribution, I think uh, we can take this business to a, a new level in the next three years. So that will be in India, and I would imagine even for exports. Right? Yeah. So we have so we uh, so one third of our business uh, does come from outside India, and we're very strong in other developing countries where spices, you know, uh, are used. So yes, I think uh, I think we're going to be exporting or at least in those markets uh, we will have a leverage to sell these products. So, Burma, you know, these days we hear so much about the recession which is coming, soft landing, hard landing. You just said yourself one third of your business is because of exports. How is all of that going to impact if there is going to be that recession and we don't know if it will be yeah, hard landing, yeah. soft landing? Well, you know, I think India is India's, uh, going to be, uh, you know, still going on a very strong growth path. Uh, the, so some of the countries where we are present in, uh, you know, have had uh, pressures, but um, we've seen we're seeing, you know, some we're seeing growth in terms of uh, sales and all of those. What we're actually having problems is the ex the problem in the country itself. Like in Turkey, we we are we're still uh, in in the growth phase, but the problem is the devaluation of the currency. So even we we may see uh, growth in our constant currency. We're facing, uh, you know, once you translate it, it we, it becomes a problem. So a lot of these countries uh, globally are facing pressures especially in some of them we're operating in. But uh, I think the India growth story will continue. And we're already seeing that in the last one or two years that, uh, that the actual saliency of our global sales is shifting more towards India. Oh, and is that going to be something that you're going to focus on maybe to double down on India to make sure that there's more? No, business? I don't, so, you know, we or don't. be natural. Yeah, it's just, I mean, at one time we were, the 30% of our sales was coming globally. Now it's, uh, now it's 28. So it's just that uh, the India, the growth in India is, 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 is more than what's happening overseas. So when we see this growth in India as well, there's another story that is simultaneously panning out. You spoke about how the Indian consumer is so price conscious. There is premiumization that's taking place. The Indian consumer is now more exposed than ever before. We've seen the uh, proliferation of so many D2C brands, premium brands that are doing well. What would be Dabur's strategy for all of this? No, we have a strategy. As I said, you know, we are, we are, we are putting to, together a, a team that basically, a marketing team that comes out with products specifically for, for the modern trade or the e-commerce, uh, more premium products. Uh, which uh, which can be sold there, and um, so it's not necessary that. And once once those products are accepted, then we put it on the general trade larger distribution. So we do have a strategy. We are we are planning to have a D two C double shop, which we are la launching soon, where you can get all our products available. Because at this point of time, uh, you know people don't even realize that uh, our range is yeah. so is so wide. So everyone seems to and uh, focus on these power brands which we have the 10 or 20 top products so uh, the idea is to be able to have a full sort of um, portfolio where the consumer understands that you know they can get uh, uh, you know more products from Dabur and more health care. So what are D2C strategies? Super app or Dabur super app? So, similar to that where you you know you can actually go in and and figure out a whole product range and be able to buy those. You use a lot of apps? 
Well, I'm scammed, not you a believe lot. believe in the super app? Because I'm confused. There's bundling, unbundling. Yeah. No, but a lot of... Uh, How lot, many apps uh, are we supposed to have? Especially some of the big conglomerates are now making super apps. But right. I don't think ours is... A, ours, we have reached that stage of a super app. But, uh, you know, every, everything's moving towards so technology. So you have to move yeah, towards yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. How are you going to increase that 10%? Because, you know, like you said, it's 10%. It's still more than what the e-commerce penetration in India is. You're outstripping that. So how will you maintain that? Well, we're going to, in, 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 in these areas, you have to be able to, uh, you know, um, onboard more, uh, more avenues of uh, different sort of uh, sellers. You have to have a, a wider product range and you have to really give the customer something which they can't get in shops. So that's what we're trying to do. How will the EverReady and Dabur synergy pan out, for, especially for distribution? You know, it's a, it's a totally separate transaction, and uh, of course, you know, uh, the family have done it uh, personally. So it's got, uh, so the, uh, yeah, it's going to be arm's length. You know, of course, you know, we there will be um, uh, some, there will be help, uh, which uh, which we will get from Darbar in terms of you know aligning our marketing and advertising um, spends. Uh, and uh, whatever, they, at the end of the day, they are both FMCG. Of course, you know, yeah. they may not be in the same shops. Some of some of uh, some of them may. So there will be synergy, and you know, we'll take the we'll take the best learnings that we've uh, installed in Double over the last twenty years, and 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 put it in EverReady, and make sure that uh, you know we're running a tight ship. How big an M&A watch chest do you have? You clearly have one. <laughs> no, I mean, Darboy has reserves of, you know, close to 6,000 crores. So um, we, we've always had a watch chest. So we're not, we're not scared of M&As, but it has to make sense uh, commercially as well as uh, it has to uh, expand uh, Darboy's portfolio into new, into new categories. Like we have done with Bacha. Virat Kohli is, of course, back in flavor after that. <laughs> Anybody is not in play. Yeah, but uh, unfortunately, he's not. Yeah, but uh, as you know, some of the uh, uh, the IPL is always uh, a little bit more uh, because you have to have a lot more Indian players. So it's always difficult. Uh, most of them don't come back into the auction. This time, because you know you've had these big auctions that have also taken place for the media rights, is there going to be more pressure on the teams to spend more? given the environment of what's happening with companies set, cutting back on advertising? Well, the model of this whole IPL has changed over the last 10 years. Historically, for most of the money which used to come from central revenue, were, which is what BCCI um, sort of um, um, decides or, or negotiates and, and then keeps some and, and, puts, and then gives all the teams has now become much more because 80% of the revenue now is is central rights, which we don't even have control of. So uh, uh, th those are already negotiated for the next five years, as you know. So the kind of purse that uh, each team gets is uh, makes it uh, um, you know makes it kind of probable that most teams do spend uh, their max uh, in terms yeah. of players. Uh, and in terms of whatever variables each team has over the last few years has been kind of uh, going down because there have been no home games, so there have been no ticket sales. Sponsorship is still quite a lot in demand, but don't forget uh, that the advertisers in the cricket universe are, are still limited, and now there are 10 teams that are you know, negotiating to get Plus those sponsors. Plus all the startups are vacating yeah. the space yeah. that had been occupying it. Yeah, so historically we had, uh, we had the big conglomerates advertising. Over the last three, four years, it's mainly been the startups. So the advertising universe has changed, but um, I think uh, because of the whole uh, strength of the proposition, you know, I, we, we won't have a problem getting uh, advertisers and sponsorships. What have been the biggest lessons for you? Because, you know, earlier we saw such a big churn that was happening uh, year after year. No, no I think uh, you have to be, uh, you have to really uh, uh, be ready to, um, uh, you have to implement your business uh, decisions uh, and, and your plans well ahead of time. Uh, before what was happening is that everyone was kind of sticking to, um, you know, were, were actually demanding a lot more in terms of from their sponsors, in terms of price and things like that. And at the end, you realize that, you know, everyone's cutting prices. So now whatever deals we've done, like, you know, 90% of our sponsors are already tied in for the next two or three years. Okay. And so that's the lesson we learned, is not to wait till the last minute. Are you going to have any big new sponsors for the new? No, our main, our main uh, title sponsor is Ebix. Yeah. Uh, but um, I think... Uh, uh, barring that, we uh, still uh, have the same names. 
And you're profitable yet? Is the team profitable? We were, I, think, I think we were one of the first teams that were profitable. Yeah. Yes. And you From the seventh profitable? year. Yes. Now all teams are profitable. Okay. Except the two Except new ones. Except the two new ones. Yeah. They cannot yeah. be. Yeah. Well, here's uh, wishing you all the very Thank best uh, with oh. the new IPL edition. Are you going to do any more sports leagues? Um, we've the, well, we own another team in the in the same in the cricketing. Uh, we own a team in the in Punjab Kings uh, owns also a, a team in the Caribbean. Mm. Uh, and uh, historically, the family did invest in other leagues. We did we, we did invest in hockey and badminton. That's why I'm asking. Are we yeah, but see it's more? yeah, it's 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 tough. It's a tough environment at the moment. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I don't. Uh, uh, it's very difficult. Uh, yeah, even though I believe that you know India should be promoting other uh, sports. Then uh, and you know we've done so well recently in the Commonwealth Games and you know we had we, this was our best year in the Olympics as well. But I think uh, in I think uh, some of the other sports uh, really need nurturing before they can actually be doing leagues. Yeah, yeah. You've seen other conglomerates yeah. like Kabaddi yeah. and all of that yeah, stuff. Yeah, which is actually doing quite well. Yeah. Yeah. So let's see. Okay. So here's uh, wishing all the very best and Thank appreciate you. you giving us the time here on ETNA. Thank you.